I am Jay and in this video I'm going to show you how to use depth of field rendering in Das Studio. This is a video that was inspired or shall I say the whole series is inspired by a reader of my website uh, verselewis.com where I give the occasional 3D tips and tricks and uh, the reader is Branson and he said could you kindly make some more Das Studio tutorials because I can't find any on YouTube that are really valuable and I'm learning so much from you and that's a very nice thing to say thank you Branson and uh, who am I to deny that request so uh, this is the first video in the series this is not meant to be a full series on Das Studio just tips and tricks and odds and ends how you can dive in and um, you know uh, get better at Das Studio and have fun doing it so in this uh, video I'm going to show you how to render this depth of field effect and uh, that is something that occurs naturally in photography where the lens or the depth of field of the, of the captured image is out of focus in some places and only in focus in other places. So here's an example of what that looks like and that's created by a well, the physical phenomenon that when light enters the photographic lens not everything can usually be reproduced in focus where that a chip is or where the film used to be and on uh, mobile phones this effect usually doesn't happen because the aperture is so small that often the whole image appears to be in focus and that is something that we have in 3d more or less all the time where when we render a scene everything is in focus and um, that can sometimes look a little bit sterile so this depth of field effect is something that we can well create artificially in most rendering applications and das studio supports that as well so let's have a look at what exactly we're doing today um, we're gonna set up a scene in das studio which is a really old scene from the ant farm it's called bc movie stands the office very funky uh, but it's still working really well we're going to create a camera that's important you can't use the perspective viewpoint for that you have to create a camera and set it up accordingly and create the depth of field effect in there uh, it's very easy to do if you know how and i'll show you how to do that and then we're going to render this thing of course in with depth of field this works in both NVIDIA iRay and 3D Lite. I'm going to use the iRay engine for the demo, but uh, if I have time, I will also do this in 3D Lite and show you how this works. The tools we use for this are, of course, Das Studio 4.9.2.70 to be exact. And I've already said it's the, uh, the prop I'm using is the BC Movie Stands The Office from by the end farm but primitives will work fine to any any scene that you have um, in your library will will do fine and I'm gonna do this on Windows 10 uh, built 1607 I believe and I'm recording this at the beginning of November 2016 so without further ado let's jump right into DAS studio because the movie stand I'm using is such an old set it is not in my smart content tab well it, it kind of appears here but uh, if you click on it there's no file so i'm gonna have to use the um, good old-fashioned content library here which works just as well i don't i won't show you i won't bore you with the details of how to load content in that studio i'm sure you figure that out by yourself so this is a couple of sets here and it's also a desk and a door and there's also a coat rack and an alleyway back here. So there we go. This is the this is the whole scene. This is the whole set. And it's a little bit small. We're not going to use characters for this. But what I'm thinking is I can position my camera right about here somewhere, and then get a shot of this old 50s kind of detective office. Yeah, that's the plan. So first of all, when we set up anything, when we load a scene in, we're in the perspective view. And other applications call this something like the director's camera. And it's not really meant to be used for rendering. This is just a, a non-orthographic 3D view that we can wander around our scene and set things up the way we want it. So uh, in my case, I can use it to roughly position the camera. It's going to be somewhere here, I guess, so that this bit is not in shot. But 
to uh, I can I can render this but I don't have the options that a proper camera would give me so I'm going to create a camera over here under create new camera and when I do that I have the option to either apply the default settings which means the camera comes in pointing down in the middle of the scene that's not what we want or I'm going to use the second option here copy the active view which in my case is the perspective view so what this means is it'll set up the camera and the camera is going to see exactly what I'm seeing in my perspective view here and that's exactly what I'm going to do accept and then I'm kind of disturbed by this weird crosshair that I'm seeing here well that's only because in the perspective view I'm kind of looking at the same space what as what the camera is seeing now and that has some some of these lines here so I can carry around with my perspective view and move around and see where my camera is currently that's here but in order to see what I've just framed up I can head over here and change the perspective view to something like camera one that is exactly what we've just set up and when I do that I see the camera and all I see here is this little white dot we'll worry about that later now when I do that I can also select the camera here in my scene outline make sure it's selected and head over to the parameters tab by the way if any of these tabs are not showing you can head over to window and panes and then you can select them from there so there's a scene tab that's the outliner some some programs call it outliner it lets you it shows you every item in the scene and uh, then of course there's a viewport and here's the parameters tab so those are the two that we're going to need here and of course the content library as well if uh, if you need to load anything in so under whoops no, and also if you tab if you click one of those tabs then this thing disappears so in case you need a bit more room or you need to bring up other panes you just click on them and they they come and they go as well luckily so under parameters with the camera selected we can head over down to the camera tab here and there's a few options that are that are um, interesting so right now if I'm looking through the camera I think that this is this shot isn't wide enough for me this is a very small scene and I'd like the scene to be a little bit wider and in order to do that we can have a look at the focal length parameter it defaults to 65 millimeters which is um, not really what the human eye sees the human eye sees something along the lines of a 50 millimeter lens this is based on 35 millimeter photography by the way this is very accurate in Dash Studio so it defaults to 65 millimeters but that's not really what we want so I'd like to bring that down and make that slightly less I think I want to bring this down to something along the lines of 38 millimeters so that's not um, super wide but that is certainly wider than it was before and now of course um, uh, what if we can if we switch back over to the perspective view I can see that my camera itself hasn't actually changed positions I could also dolly the camera but that wouldn't really change what I'm seeing in the scene uh, actually to show you this better I'm going to split my viewport here that's done under window oops viewports side by side and if I do that, I have two things here. One's the perspective view, while the other one's also the perspective view. I'm going to change the left one to my camera one. So this is what the camera sees. And my right view will still be the perspective view. So this is what we can see from, from all angles here. This outline, by the way, that shows me, well, what would be rendered. Uh, currently that is called the aspect frame I'm going to switch that off we're going to switch that on again later you can do that uh, by clicking on these three little lines here and then just untick show aspect frame it'll come in handy later and here we can now select whichever item we want to manipulate in our case that's the camera so select the camera and we see this whole outliney thing well we'll get to that in a minute I just wanted to make the point that when I select the camera and I change the focal length here then you can see that on my left hand side this makes a drastic effect but on the right hand side you can see that the, cameras rem the, the camera remains in the same position as it was. Now it's different if I were to 
hover over my camera window and then scroll my mouse wheel. This would physically dolly the camera. So we will remain, we will retain the same focal length as we had before, but right now the camera moves positions. So that's a different effect here. And I'm going to do both here. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to set the focal length to 38 millimeters, as I said, and then I'm going to drag the camera into the scene a little bit more and then perhaps uh, turn it around like this so that we have the desk in the foreground here and some of the scene in the background. When we frame up the camera it's also very important to see what we're going to see in the final rendered picture and that's where this thing comes in that was switched on in the other viewport here on uh, on these uh, few lines here the aspect frame and if you select that then you see a passport to kind of a kind of a white border here that gives you at the top left here the aspect ratio which is four by three right now uh, but we can change that in the render settings. I'll show you how in a moment. Um, but this is what we're going to see on the final render. So I can see that my scene doesn't have a roof. So the ceiling isn't here. That's why this little triangle is showing here. And I can see a little bit of, you know, non-background here. So in order to frame that out, I'll just shift my camera over a little bit further. Perhaps like so. Something like that should be fine for now. We'll still see a little bit of this, but you know, because this is about depth of field rather than about how to frame up your scene perfectly, we'll just leave it as it is here. When in doubt, just shift it up a little bit, like so, perhaps. Let's leave it like this for now and have a look at where we could set this aspect ratio that is now being seen here. Well, that happens under the render settings. That's another tab that's over here, render settings. And again, if you don't have that showing or if it's in a different place, um, head over to window, panes, and render settings. There it is, you can switch that on and off here. And it is under the general tab, both in iRay and in 3D Lite, it's the same position. You have a few, you, it's basically the pixel size of what you're rendering. So I'm currently setting it up for 600 by 800 render or an aspect ratio of four by three. There's a big list of presets here that you can choose from, or just use custom to select your own aspect ratio and pixel dimensions. You can set it up for full HD or any of the 16 by nine aspect ratios. And then you can see that this window that you're previewing here through your camera is changing. I'm gonna leave it on four by three, and perhaps 600 by 800 isn't a lot, but you know, for, for testing, fine, I'll just leave that. Um, and I'll increase that, bump that up for the final render. Just wanted to show you where that is. I'm gonna close the render tab and let's get back to playing with depth of field. Let me split this up a little bit further here. And zoom in to show you the, the white outlines of what the camera sees here. Actually, maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller here, my left-hand viewport a little bit smaller, so that this is a bit bigger. And this is nice, it's just a little preview here. So these white lines, and in, in fact, this, this big white square, that is exactly what we're seeing in here, just from a different perspective. And if I change my focal length, then you can see that this thing changes size. Now remember that because in a moment when we're going to switch on the depth of field effect, which is just a button down here, there's two more of these white paints that are going to, dis going to be displayed. And that can look threatening and confusing, but it, it is really easy when, once you've got the hang of it. So let's, uh, let's switch this depth of field effect on. If it's off, then you won't be able to render with depth of field. Now we see the thing that we saw originally, but we also see these two other planes here. One is closer to the camera, one's further away from the camera. 
So what those two things are is anything in between will be in focus and everything beyond it and before it will be out of focus. And this is how a camera in real life behaves. The space in between these things is governed by the f-stop and that is the also, also known as the aperture. That's the would calls it the f-stop and it's down here and we can set that. It defaults to 22. If that sounds like a weird value then it isn't really because that comes from the real aperture setting on a on a real life camera on a digital SLR or even on a film SLR of course and the the theory behind it is a theoretical lens which hardly exists I mean it does exist and um, Stanley Kubrick has filmed with special NASA lenses which kind of defy these physics here but uh, in an ideal world, if there would be 100% light coming through the lens onto the film, then that lens would have an f-stop of 1. And if half the amount of light would go in, then it would have an f-stop of 1.4. Uh, that, um, uh, that would be half the amount of light that comes in. And if you half that again, then it'll be 2.8. And if you half that again, it'll be 5.6 and so forth. And those are the, the, the weird kind of values that we're dealing with. So the higher this value gets, the less depth of field effect you'll have. And the lower this value is, the more depth of field you have. Or in other words, the shallower the depth of field will be. I know a lot of talking it may not be easy to understand if we can't visualize it. Well, let's visualize it. It defaults to 22 or F22. And in the DAS studio world, that'll be uh, from here to here. So anything from, the, from somewhere uh, where the desk is to the back of the wall should be in focus. And everything in front of the desk will be out of focus. That'll be hard to see here because we don't get to see that much in front of the desk. But if we make this value smaller, you can see that these two, these two planes come closer together. And if we do that, the shallower the depth of field will become. So we can even go to negative values, which doesn't make any sense. So we have to kind of stay above one. Zero means we, we have such a super shallow depth of field that these planes uh, are in the same space. In the 3d world and that means everything will be out of focus but anything above one will create some portion that will be in focus in this case it's anything between these two planes and everything beyond and before it will be out of focus so in the real in the real world i would probably want to shoot this at something like 5.6 you can use any value, but 5.6 is a good starting value to have a fairly shallow depth of field. And having done that, this depth of field is now somewhere where I don't really want it. I mean, it's kind of somewhere here. There's, there's nothing there. If I wanted to focus on the, on the hat rack down here, how am I going to do that? How am I going to make those two planes appear where the hat rack is so that that appears in focus? Well, the, we do that with the focal distance and that's another parameter that we can set. So if we slide this, then you can see that the two planes, they stay together, but they move further towards the camera as the value gets lower, or they move away from the camera as the value gets higher. So you can adjust that and position it to the space in your scene that you'd like to frame up. So I'd like to focus maybe on the, on the hat rack here, so I will put it somewhere here but you can see nothing's changed here so I can't actually see is this a good effect or not I can't I can't really see that until I render the scene well the good thing with the iRay rendering engine is that you can set your viewport up to show you the rendered result of what your full render is going to look like and you do that by heading over here to the uh, draw style and then you switch that over to NVIDIA iRay it takes a moment for it to render the scene and we can maybe make that a bit bigger so we can see it better. A similar thing is, is available for the 3D light engine that works with the auxiliary viewport. I'll show you that once, we're, once we've got the hang of the depth of field effect here. So after a few render passes we should see that the front 
of my scene is out of focus or very blurry, but the back of the scene, exactly where I positioned my plane, is more in focus. It's not exactly in focus, so I think we can adjust that a little bit more. Bring the focal distance back a little bit more. And Ira kind of updates that as good as it can automatically. Depends on how fast your graphics card is. So there we go, hat rack in focus, window in focus, door in focus, but the desk, front of the desk, out of focus, exactly like what we see here. Now, if we go back and put the focal distance to somewhere closer to the desk, perhaps we want to see our detective sitting there, we want to focus on a coffee mug or something. We bring the focal distance further forward here. And then we can see that the background is now being rendered out of focus, but the desk is being rendered in focus. If we wanted to increase what is in focus and what is out of focus, we can either make this more shallow or less shallow. So in order to make it um, more like a, a perhaps get, get the background out of focus, but not as much as this, we can just decrease the aperture which means make the value bigger. I know it's kind of, you know, um, the weird way around, but the higher the value gets, the less depth of field you get, or the more, the higher the value gets, the more will be in focus in your scene. So let's slide that up. And you get a bit of a preview here as to what will be in focus, because you can see those two planes wandering apart. So perhaps we'll start, perhaps we'll use 16. And in so doing, we want to maybe move the focal points further into the room. So we'll increase the focal distance as well. And as I do that, you can probably see that the amount of what's in focus changes as well. As, as I get further away from the camera, the space between these two planes increases. And the more I get close to the camera, the space between those two planes decreases. And that is, that is based on just physical cameras if you ever had a, a like a either digital slr or film slr and sometimes they have this option that you can look through the aperture as you change it and you can see this effect live usually when you focus through an slr this happens at the at the widest aperture so you you see a very shallow depth of field but you get this the most amount of light so that's good for focusing your scene but you don't get to see a preview of the real effect. So usually there's a button there that closes the aperture and then out of a sudden the viewfinder gets much darker, but you get to preview the, the real depth of field effect there. And by the way, if that studio gets a little bit too sluggish here for your taste, just switch that viewport back over to texture shaded and then it'll stop rendering in the background. Now let's see how this would work with 3D light. The camera settings are exactly the same. I'm going to go back into my single viewport here by going over to Windows, Panes, oops, sorry, going over to Window, Viewports, Single View, and I'm going to view my perspective view here. And I don't need to see the aspect frame here because that's just for me to move around and mess around with. Uh, for three delight, uh, there's two things that we need to do. First of all, under the render settings, we need to change the render engine from NVIDIA iRay to three delight. So make sure you have the right render engine selected. This is not going to affect the the uh, under general the the render dimensions. But there's another little tab that we can utilize, which is up here, the AUX viewport. And that is a viewport just like the big one here. It's just a small one in the, in the corner. And again, if you don't have that, it's under Windows, Panes, AUX viewport. Switch that on, dock it somewhere, leave it floating, whatever you like, whatever floats your boat. And change that from perspective view to camera. And when you do that, There's a little menu up here uh, when you click these little icons. It's a little bit confusing in Death Studio that each viewport has these options, but each viewport is set up differently and hence some have other options than others. So in, in the case of the AUX viewport, 
Let me in fact make that a little bigger here. These lines have two options. One is stop IPR render and one is start IPR render. There's another one called show IPR toolbars. If you select that, you have these two buttons showing at all times. That I like that when I when I work with 3D Light. And um, currently when this when this thing is yellow, that means it's stopped. And that means we see the exact same as we see here, i.e. the texture shaded viewport option. And you can set that here as well. You can even set this to IRA even if you're not using IRA just for preview purposes. But with 3D Light, you can use this option as well, which is the interactive preview renderer. And if you select that, then you can see that the render window is kind of popping up. And that means that Das Studio in the background is now rendering the scene in 3D Light in kind of a low resolution. Still takes a moment or so to do this. And <laughs> if we had lights in the scene, then we would in fact see a rendered image here. iRay has um, some default image-based lighting, but uh, 3D Light does not have that. So it looks like we need a we need a light in our scene. Let's do that. Let me switch IPR off and create a new, let's say, distant light. That should do the trick. And a distant light, uh, it doesn't matter where in the scene it is, it, it always comes in uh, with the same, it, it's, it's parallel, it's like a sunlight. So all you need to worry about is the direction of it. And I think I'll go for something that comes from about here. We get to see a little bit of a preview, but in order to see the rendered result, of course, we need to either render the scene or uh, switch the interactive preview renderer on. That's kind of cool, but we can't really see the back of the office that is supposed to be out of focus. So let's turn the light here. It looks a little bit flat, but it doesn't really matter. It's just for demonstration purposes. And you can see that the back of the office is now out of focus and the foreground is in focus just like what we've seen before if I select my camera and I increase the focal distance then I will focus on the back and perhaps to uh, to uh, to show the effect I'll go back to f5.6 here to make it really shallow and you can see that the foreground is now out of focus and the background is in focus one other thing while I'm while I'm talking about this, there is there are these two little handles here on the camera that you can see in the in the perspective view. Uh, one is a little um, square right in front of the camera. So there's this this square here, which is where the camera is. That is to change the camera position or to basically change the camera size. Doesn't really do anything it's more for other three D objects. But there is one in front of it, and there's a little ball slightly further back. Uh, sometimes that shows up, sometimes it doesn't show up. Um, it's one of those things, kind of a trial and error thing. But these two things you can use to adjust the camera position and the position of the depth of field. So with a little ball, hold it down and move it. And what you can do here is then literally point the camera into a direction. And you can also select where exactly you'd like the focus to be. So that's kind of nice to set up your scene if you wanted this uh, little certificate on the wall to be part of the focal scene here. You can you can make sure that it's it is it is somewhere in there and then uh, you turn the camera and uh, basically point it at that. And the other little square is just for pointing the camera and to um, to adjust the size of your framing. This is a, a framing help. Again, if we were to let's switch the IPR off and let's go back to, well, in fact, we can use this viewport here, uh, look at it through camera one, uh, that by changing this little square, you can see live what happens in the little viewport on the right-hand side here. And 
as you slide it towards the camera you get to see more of your scene and you slide it away from the camera you see less of the scene and that little white ball makes it easy then to point the camera at a certain position so it's just another way of framing up the camera you can just hover over the camera viewport and use your mouse wheel or the uh, the standard camera controls for dollying and panning okay let me set this up again to produce one last final render and then we're done with this tutorial that was it i hope this was helpful to you if you have any other questions or comments about das studio if you want to know anything that isn't covered uh, please leave me a comment here and if you like this video don't forget to share it with friends family and total strangers and don't forget to subscribe to my channel bye for now i will see you next time happy rendering